Despite its loving and dedicated player base, I feel it's inaccurate to say TF2's competitive community is thriving. Even so, it's not like it's dying either. Just last year, one of the biggest TF2 LANs to date took place at I-58, and the more recent Rewind LAN at Esports Arena was arguably even bigger. As far as I can see, the competitive scene is growing, just very, very slowly. And I think one of the main reasons for this is that it's so hard to get into. Introducing myself. A fairly dedicated TF2 player who, despite my regular complaints, still plays the game on a regular basis. Am I a competitive player? I wouldn't say I am, but at the same time, it's not like I mostly play pubs either. Instead, I spend most of my TF2 playtime in lobby websites such as TF2 Center and Face It. I guess you could say I'm a pug player as opposed to a pub player, and that's how it's been for almost two years now. Despite my efforts, I found it very difficult to actually get into competitive, and I feel like there are a lot of others like me. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at some of the reasons it's so difficult to make the switch, and why I never fully made the transition from casual to competitive. And then, in another video, I'll go over some ways these problems could be fixed. Please note, this isn't an analysis, but rather me recounting my experience on the topic. So whether I'm right or wrong, or you agree or disagree doesn't really matter. This is what I've experienced, and I'm sure it's what many others have experienced as well. I hope you enjoy. The first point I feel is worth bringing up is also one of the most obvious. Casual TF2 is absolutely nothing like competitive TF2. I'm not going to dwell on this long because it's a point that you probably already know and there's not really much that can be done to directly quotation marks fix this. TF2 competitive has such a specific meta that the only way to learn it is to watch YouTube videos or have someone who can teach it to you and most players just don't have enough contacts, interest and dedication to do this. Because of this, thousands of potentially good players will never play competitive. This is just one of the reasons so many people don't play competitive, and it leads well into my next point, which is that it's very hard to actually play competitive TF2 formats. Right now, the easiest way to play the most popular formats, 6v6 and Highlander, is through TF2 Center, but this is still far from optimal. For a start, there are so few players you actually know about lobby and matchmaking websites like TF2 Center and Face It. The average peak players for TF2 is around 65,000, and the average peak players for TF2 Center is around 350, meaning TF2 Center accounts for around 0.5 of TF2's player base. A lot of you might think this isn't a low number, but it definitely could be higher. So why isn't it higher? There could be multiple reasons, but I think a big factor is that not many people are looking for competitive games. If more people at least knew that Sixes and Highlander existed, I feel like these sites would become a lot more popular. Valve has begun to address this problem with their official competitive matchmaking, but right now nobody uses it, and it's failing to fulfill its role of transitioning the casual player base to more competitive formats. So far we've established that TF2's competitive scene is very small and it isn't growing because players either can't be bothered to learn the meta or they don't know a competitive scene exists at all. But there are a lot more reasons why the competitive community isn't growing as fast as a lot of people would like. One of the obstacles I've had to overcome is competitive players are too good. The competitive scene is growing so slowly that players who are new to competitive have no choice but to play against people with months or even years of experience. I agree to some extent it's important to play against people of a higher skill level because that's the only way you'll ever improve, but being constantly pummeled by players who are much better than you just isn't fun. And because of this, hundreds of players are put off of competitive with the idea that they are not good enough yet. The truth is, you'll never be good enough if you just stick to pubs, but most people just want to enjoy themselves playing a video game, and being destroyed over and over again just isn't fun. The competitive newbie isn't the only one not having fun though, because it's likely they're going to be a huge detriment to their team. I'm sure a lot of you experienced players will know how annoying having a bad player on your team is. It can ruin what should have been a fun game, and having your fun ruined is going to lead to rage, which most likely is going to be directed at the bad player in question. I've been a receiver of insults before, and I'm sure most of you have. It sucks. A lot of players will find this discouraging, and it can lead to ideas that the competitive community is just made up of toxic arseholes, which is something we really don't want. What's more, if a player gets enough hate, there's a good chance they'll just stop playing altogether, which is destructive to TF2's success as an eSport. I'm digressing a bit here. 
The point is, it's very difficult for new competitive players to play with and against players of a similar skill level. In pubs, a player is wrecking people drastically below their skill level, and in competitive, they're being wrecked by people drastically above it. There is no middle ground, and because of this, to new players, competitive sometimes seems like this exclusive club that's actively trying to suppress the less skilled TFT population. In reality, the comp community wants nothing more than to have more people playing competitive, but I feel like we should be making more of an effort to introduce more people to the formats. I'm not saying we're not making any effort whatsoever. North America has an active newbie mix group, which helps introduce pub players to sixes. Europe also has a newbie mix group, but it's not so active. It got revived a few months back, but the spark seems to have fizzled out. Why? I guess there just wasn't enough interest. Which brings me back to one of my first points, that not many people know about groups like these. Going back to the point that there is no middle ground between pubs and competitive, I should say that's not entirely true. There is a middle ground, kind of, or at least there should be. ETF2L, the European TF2 League, has an open division where all skill levels can enter. The problem is, all skill levels can enter. I haven't had much league experience, but I'd say sandbagging is a fairly big problem. I don't want to be rude to my former teammates, but in my most recent team, there were a few players who were probably a bit too good for where they were. Now, yes, I think there is a limit to the amount of high-level players that are allowed in an open team, and I believe they are only allowed to play if they haven't played in a high-level division for a couple of years. But for the players that are allowed to play, it's just another thing putting off new players and teams. To be fair, UGC also exists, and the average skill level for their lower divisions is supposedly less than ETF2Ls. Even so, the amount of teams playing is so low, they've had to remove the Iron Division for both Sixes and Highlander, at least in Europe anyway. Ideally, new players should be able to form teams consisting entirely of players new to competitive, but teams like this are going to get trampled because of who they'll be playing against. A much better option is to be recruited into a team of experienced players who will be willing to coach and train you. This is what eventually happened to me, but I was lucky enough to have friends who were willing to put up with me. Most teams would rather just recruit an experienced player than wait for an inexperienced one to become good. Which brings me on to my final point. It's very hard to find a team, at least a decent team. I'm sure you've all heard the cliche about looking for a job. Junior position available must have five years of experience, a doctorate in theoretical physics, and must have also solved world hunger. This is a bit what looking for teams felt like as someone with no experience. That is, if you can actually find a team to apply to, because nobody wants to start a team. I've tried creating teams multiple times, and organising 5-8 to eight people is a nightmare. But let's say you actually get in a team. Even with all the players recruited, it's unlikely the team will stay together long. I was in 5 teams before I managed to get a good one. 3 of them disbanded after the first scrim, and the other 2 were abandoned before all the players were even recruited. In short, organising a team is hard harder than most are willing to put up with. And anybody who is willing isn't likely to hire crappy new players. And so the pub players' dreams of competitive are dashed, and they return to the warm embrace of casual TF2. But that shouldn't have to be the case. And in the next video, I'm going to talk about ways all of these things could be fixed, or at least improved. But for now, I hope you enjoyed my story, pretty much. The story of my experience with competitive. Goodbye. This meme will never die because we are in the beam. We are in the beam. We are in the beam. We are in the beam.